Welcome to the October 17th Select Board meeting. I'll call this meeting to order. And we will have a consent agenda. Warrants, uh, minutes from July 11th and July 18th, 2018. Warrants for PR 1914, AP 1915, AP 1914, AP 1945. We have, I'll uh, hold this till the end, I'll skip over that. I'll skip over all of the uh, police until uh, Chief Mason has a chance. We have early voting pending location, and that's going to be pending location approval. Do we get that approval? Yeah, voting location will be there. It will? Yeah. Early. 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 Oh, early voting. Yeah. Okay. Which is town clerk's office yep. uh, between regular business office between October 22nd, starting next Monday through November 2nd, 2018. Uh, we have a dispatch mem memorandum of understanding, and that is the uh, agreement between dispatch and the town of Hatley. Do you name anybody? I'm Washington taking out the police until mm -hmm. Chief Mason has that. Motion to approve with the exception of the police items. Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 And now I will turn that over to Chief Mason for my other three, which is the appointments of special officer, uh, HPD resignation, and HPD retirement. Okay. Um, so first, um, the resignation of retirement, um, Sergeant Costa, who has been with us for uh, almost 10 years, uh, has selected to uh, leave us, and he'll be moving on to Wilbraham Police Department. Um, the K-9, uh, which has been in service for a little over five years, has met the requirements from the Sand Foundation where we originally uh, received the grant. We do still have uh, funding available to us through that grant, and we have a sizable uh, amount of money that was raised uh, by Sergeant Costa before he left us in a couple of different fundraisers that he did. Um, we weren't really prepared for him to leave this quickly so we were actually using or have actually already used um, some of the fundraising funds to upfit what would have been his new a cruiser um, it wasn't a brand new car we actually used a car that we had and retrofitted it for um, what would have been nomar's second vehicle uh, so unfortunately with him leaving we were kind of halfway in the middle of transitioning the program uh, we do have funding available to us to uh, acquire a new k um, It is a beneficial program to our agency, both socially um, with the public, the general public, as well as uh, with law enforcement. Um, for law enforcement purposes, uh, we are sad to see Doug go, but um, he expressed uh, his interest to move on and look to greener pastures uh, for for whatever reason that may be, and we are uh, going to retire the dog as our policy does allow for us to do uh, to him and his family. So I would uh, request that you accept his letter of resignation and Nomar's letter of retirement. Um, so that basically means that he cannot be used in another department? It's not, it's not necessarily a human being, um, but I don't, that is not their intention to use it. They actually already have a canine in Wilbraham. Um, I believe they could if they wanted to have a second team, but that's my, my understanding is that's not what's going to happen. He's going to be retired, and that's that. And since there's no retirement benefits or anything like that, like a team would be, I think if they wanted to try to use him again, they probably could, but that's, that's up to them. He's six. Correct. That's another one of the main reasons why we said the dog is owned by the town. Um, and I explained to Sergeant Costa when he did inform me that he would officially be resigning that we would like to try to retrain the dog with another handler. 
So after sitting down with uh, not only Doug as well as some other handlers in the area, the chances of retraining a dog at that age are pretty low. Um, and even if we could, the amount of time that we would get out of that dog wouldn't be really worth uh, doing it all over again. So we made that decision and on top of that, Sergeant Costa has um, offered to, uh, so I don't even hear that anymore, mm -hmm. you probably do. Sergeant Costa has actually offered to, um, in order to keep the program running, uh, he has a, uh, I don't want to say sizable, but he has a crew lead that he has accrued over the years that he would actually like to donate or gift back to the town to cover some of the costs for a new puppy so that we can continue the program here. So that's another source of funding that we would be able to tap into if we needed it. I don't think we will. We actually we actually did very good with fundraising. Um, so we should be in good shape to be able to continue the program. I would certainly like to thank uh, Sergeant Costa for his 10 years of uh, dedication to this town. He uh, was certainly uh, muchly appreciated out in our community and certainly with Nomar uh, people have become to really like seeing uh, him and his dog wherever he would come. He would go to many different functions in town and they, we do appreciate that too. So our condolences and we can only wish him the best as he moves on in his career. special police officers you know we like to use our special pool to get to know the folks that we hire uh, see whether or not they're worth their salt and whether or not they may someday uh, work out to be a full-time officer here so with Sergeant Costa leaving you, you, you recognize the fact that we do have some turnover that we have to stand top of uh, so seated before you uh, is Troy Emerson Jacob Laughlin and uh, not here tonight is Jacob Marine, so two Jacobs. We have like three Toms and two Jacobs. <laughs> so Mr. Emerson resides in Greenfield. Uh, he's currently a member of the Massachusetts Army National Guard. His military occupational specialty is military police. He completed his initial training at Fort Leonard Wood, uh, Missouri on May 25th, 2017. And he also completed his Massachusetts Reserve Police Officer Certification at the beginning of this year. That is a basic requirement in order to be entered into our program. Mr. Emerson is currently seeking his criminal justice degree at Greenfield Community College. Jacob Laughlin resides in South Hadley. Uh, he is currently in the U.S. Army Reserve. His military occupational specialty was also military police. And he completed his initial training also at Fort Leonard Wood on May 31st, 2018. He completed his Massachusetts Reserve Police Officer Certification last July. Mr. Laughlin is also seeking his criminal justice degree at HGC. Uh, Jacob Marini is currently employed <coughs> at uh, Wenick, Western Munich, uh, New England University as a camp, full-time campus police officer. He is not here tonight because he is away at mandatory training for his department. He resides in East Long Meadow and began his career as a full-time campus officer as a student patroller. So he started when he was still attending classes there. He was also a park ranger in New York State. Uh, Mr. Marini has a bachelor's degree in criminal justice and possesses all of the certifications to start our field training program immediately. So my request to the board would be that the three individuals named be um, appointed as special police officers for the town Thank you very much for your service. We appreciate it. And welcome to Hadley. Um, all of us 
I mean, glad I voted yes, right? <laughs> <laughs> I had no doubt. <laughs> My understanding is just on another note, the MOU, uh, the MOU for the dispatch is what uh, voted on just the other day unanimously, so there's they're good to go on there as well. No, I know, I'm just saying they voted on the other side. Oh, good. Perfect. Any other comments? Any other comments? Any other comments? See you tomorrow. year snow removal contract, which has been in effect for a year and a half now. You know, this is my second season of it. So to kind of figure that and now to come in October and say, hey, you know, within 90 days, you guys might be responsible for this. It, it's a lot to take in in October. Um, and I think that this should have really been thought through with the state of how they were going to maintain it when they decided to build this. You know, we didn't ask for it. I understand there was a petition from Residents at Green Leaves or something like that, but we, no, didn't, we didn't ask for it either. No, no, no business that I spoke to or property owner from South Maple Street to the Amherstown line wanted this. You know, it's fine, it's there, you know, we'll take it, but it, it's also such an added burden, you know. That's how we feel. I, I just wanted to, I just was curious to, <clears throat> so I read the old bylaw and basically the bylaw is that the landowner is supposed to remove uh, snow on the sidewalk within 12 hours of a, an, a, an event so mm -hmm. to speak that's the current bylaw so I was curious where did the plowing of the sidewalks come from because it's not there's nothing in the bylaw right now about the town maintaining the sidewalks it is on the landowner right now so the way you guys wrote this bylaw, this amendment, the you, amendment, I you know. took out the existing bylaw, you deleted it in its entirety. I've got that. I'm saying the so current bylaw correct. says correct. Which oh. I'm, trust me, I'm 100 percent fine if you're going to do across the board to everybody in town. No, or, no, no. But the bylaw is that the landowner has to maintain the sidewalk. Well, he's, he's saying the differential yeah, treatment. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. But now by doing this, that's like when you guys came up with the sewer impact fee. 
if you said, okay, from Spruce Hill down that end, you're paying a sewer impact fee, nobody else is. Mm -hmm. this, this is very discriminative where it's only on us. And we're one of the larger taxpayers in town. So it's not like, you know, these, and I drove down before the meeting, I drove from Middle Street down to the bridge. And you look at the sidewalks, there's two miles of sidewalks on this end. We have, I don't know, not even a mile over there. You know, this is both sides of the road, that's one side of the road. So the state has an easement for those sidewalks, right? <clears throat> the, the state took it. Okay. The state took the land. Okay. So it's, it's theirs. And even, like I said, I've been going round and round with the state and, and Marlo from DPW as soon as this happened, as soon as we heard about it, to find out who's going to be responsible. And the emails I go back, I, I know I forwarded to you guys, you saw the email trail. There are stakeholder meetings. We were never at any of those meetings. Nobody ever came to any of us. Kurt Shumway, who's another owner, I know he sent you guys an email, he copied me on it. He was never invited to those stakeholder meetings as well. So, like I said, to come back in snow season, as we should call it right now, because what, the Attorney General has up to 90 days to approve a bylaw? Is that? So, mm -hmm. if town meeting votes yes on this, 90 days from Thursday is when? We're gonna have a lot of snow by then, probably. So who's gonna be responsible from, from now till then to remove it? The no. state. Um, I think I think what we'll do is take it under advisement and talk to Joel tomorrow night when he comes and see where we, where we go with that. We may we may pull it. Who knows? I think there's night. a lot of responsibilities on on the private sector, the business sector, and on our backs because we have been maintaining them for so long for probably forty years anyway that I know. Of. Well. I know, but how long have you been maintaining East Street, um, Middle Street, and West Street? At, at least 40, probably 50. Yeah, exactly. It, it, that was one of the comments I made to Marlo. You know, you guys have been doing it in the center of town, yeah. which is great if you can do it. It, it benefits we didn't, we a didn't lot of people. We didn't research this very much. Nobody, lack of communication here between the state, DPW, and us, of course, as usual. And, you know, we're just throwing something out there that's really not going to work. For anybody. It, you know, one of the things I did contact the attorney general's office, they can't make a decision until it's actually voted upon. Yeah. You know, and, and one of the things going through, I sent them the, the way it was written, and they said, well, it kind of is separating you, and I let her know, you know, they do the other businesses in town. It, yeah, so the whole, if, if, if we were going to separate the business district from the residential district, then that would be one thing, but we're not doing that. It just right, so to be in this public comment. So yeah, tomorrow, sure. we're not going to make any decisions. We're not going to talk about it. We're going to just go with talking to Joel tomorrow and see where we go with it. Okay. okay. Yeah, I can't be here tomorrow night, so I just wanted to. Certainly. Thank you for your views. Here. Appreciate Thank it. You. Thank you very much. I yeah, appreciate thanks. it. Thanks. Can okay. You, can you email your concerns to District 2 also, John? Yeah. Yeah, I've been in contact with them with the project they're doing in front of the mall. So. All right. Let's jump to. Um, North Hadley Village Hall, so Tim can go to something. Tim's not here for that. No. What do you, he, he, he's here for the North Hadley Village Hall. He's here for, uh, right? The senior Whatever you want. Here. <laughs> well, weren't, you, weren't you here for that? Oh, the car. The, 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 the car. Special, oh, special town meeting. Oh, the car. Yeah. Special yeah. town meeting. Okay. So why don't we just Just start going through the Okay. All right, Senior Center Library Fire Substation updates. Go yes. for it. You guys want to say anything? Sure. So, insofar as the Senior Center goes, um, last week and a half ago, um, we um, were shown a design that the committee really loved. So, um, we've Kind of set that aside there was a meeting today a phone conference between the two design teams for the library and the senior center um, to pick up where they um, left off before um, and i believe both our committees are meeting separately at the beginning of the week to see what they came up with vote on that and either go back or 
but it looks it looks good. Um, so far, we haven't run into any snags, so we're hopeful. Two to one parking. That's what we're shooting for. <laughs> Two to one parking. That's the deal. That's <laughs> what we're going. Well, we met the parking right, and the library kind of got their top three wish list on what they needed for space. Is what I heard. Kind of. So, so right now. Um, so thank you. So as a result of the meeting that you had, um, that plan design, set plan design was sent to our chair. Um, and Allison has forwarded it to all of the library committee members for their review and comment. Um, but in her, her remarks about it, she said that um, you know, it uh, meets the requirements that the library building committee had provided. Um, and then she's just soliciting input in case there's anything else that anybody sees. But um, I took a cursory look at it myself, but I'm going to look at it again, you know, for, on a, on a larger computer screen when I have a chance, but certainly it seems to be well in line with what the library was um, looking for. Again, there may be other comments, I just want to be cautious, but right. but, um, but it, it certainly was expeditious and in line with everybody's goal of moving this along. Yep. Great. Thank you. 30 days out from the deadline. We're pretty close to think we'll get it. Are we, when are we going to think you might be able to be submitting those pre pre uh, uh, so planning I, board meeting? I, I think it's a little premature to say only because officially each building committee hasn't met to review it together and get the total feedback from each committee. Um, and as I said, both committees are trying to meet, or we have a meeting Tuesday. I think you're trying to get to one put together for next week. So, Unfortunately, we're not, um, from what I was reading, it looks like we're not going to be able to meet. However, um, making sure that, you know, everything's in alignment with open meeting law. Um, right. The chair is soliciting feedback from individual members. We're not deliberating. Um, if there's any feedback needed to be forwarded, um, then we will do so. Right. So we should know more by the end of next week. Yeah. And she she asked for us to have a, a, any response to her in by noon on Friday. So Perfect. in the spirit of that 30 day window. Great. Mm -hmm. Sounds great. Mm -hmm. Add anything for also? Um, I think that's everything for now. <laughs> <laughs> it's great. Thank we can you. keep digging if you want. But no, I that's, stop a, that's okay. <laughs> we, we like what we're hearing. Just a couple of things from yeah. my perspective, okay. but go ahead. Mm. Uh, no, go ahead. And then I was just going to mention the request to have a, um, that we're going to be having a bigger conversation in November. Right. Something I wanted, I wanted to add something to, I guess, I was thinking, sorry, um, but thinking about the schedule. Too late. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> this, is, this is more sorry. comment for the library. Thinking about the schedule and thinking about possibly relocating the senior center yep. and what that would look like yeah. and maybe trying to move that closer to the spring as opposed to in the middle of the winter if we are going to do that stepped up schedule so right. just kind of putting it out there yep, yep. not so a big we'll, thing well, that's all yeah. because um, what I was going to uh, report was part of the discussion we had at the library building committee meeting was um, in the spirit of, of you know, the recognition that these things don't happen overnight and we want to make sure that um, any relocation is done with, you know, enough forethought for all parties involved. I mean, you guys have been doing a lot of legwork, work, but the Municipal Building Committee as well, um, that we've had a lot of conversations, but the select board itself has yet to formally sit down and actually walk through the pros and cons of timing on these projects. Mm -hmm. So uh, the library building committee was just, just to kickstart it, requesting that the select board at a November meeting have time allocated for exactly that discussion, which would then inform what you just okay. said in yeah. terms of what are we really looking at? Because at this point we haven't yeah, because I don't know we how, set direction on that. how these dates to affect the library schedule and that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. I haven't looked at that, so. Yeah, and that would be yes. ideally a meeting of um, representation from the library building committee, the senior center building committee, the municipal building committee, um, and anybody else with a, you know, interested in that whole um, idea of swing space. So it seems like there, there are a lot of things that need to be discussed and um, we have to get through 
town meeting, obviously, that the request went to Joyce to put that on the calendar. Okay. Chair? So from the department head level, uh, for operational uh, continuity and continuity of operations, uh, we uh, have started talking about the swing space, and obviously you all uh, will make decisions that will affect how this uh, works, but in terms of coordinating it, in terms of making sure communications are happening, space allocation is going to work, that there are no breaks in our, of our operations. Very much in the same vein as we did when we had replaced the asbestos tile floor in the town hall. We had to move everybody over into the public safety complex for a space of eight weeks. So the department head is beginning to work on that issue. One of the things that came up in the department head meeting is the, the demolition of Hooker School and what that may look like. And not that we need to make a decision tonight, but we may want to think about having an auction of the building contents all that surplus stuff that we're storing in other buildings, all the surplus equipment and gear that's in the Hooker School right now, as well as the fixtures, anything of value, you can auction it off. We have plenty of nine inches asbestos floor tile. <laughs> <laughs> to replace the ones in some other people's houses. Memorabilia. <laughs> and a pool table. That will be taken under consideration at that at that meeting. Okay. All right, and yep. Thank you thank very you. much. Thank Thanks you. for coming out tonight. Yep. All righty. Uh, Sub fire station committee met last night. I kind of caught the tail end of it. We went over some of it. Um, the timeline. I have a timeline here. Uh, of when they would like to keep things moving along and things are moving along on that project. Um, they went over some of the drawings, the electrical boxes having to be moved here and there, where the, the uh, sewer lines are, um, the water lines might be. There's a catch basin in the middle of the road from Amherst coming in, but somebody DOT paved over it, so it's not visible. So now they got to find it. So you know, there's all these little little things that crop up. But basically, uh, we're moving very well ahead of time. We also were able to um, get some lockers from UMass, um, and those are going to be stored until such a time as we're going to use them. But they were too good to pass up. So. Um, working on that end of it. We had a little overage um, on the cost of things having to go up, but we also had some surplus. So the money is just being moved around. There's nothing coming back and being asked for more. Um, we need to take a vote on that on Monday night. We have another meeting scheduled for Monday night. So all in all, uh, we're, we're moving along. So far, so good. We had some soil up there, of course, that showed um, pesticides, surprise, surprise. Um, so that's just going to be a little take of taking top soil off and, you know, stockpiling it and then doing whatever with it afterwards. But it's not any big issue at this point. So it's all good. So that's the sub fire and library. Um, special town meeting presentation. Uh, we can do that. There are a couple of changes that I'd like to highlight for the board. Um, um, article 3 on page 5. <coughs> that bottom uh, authorization to amend the borrowing. Um, Fire department used all that money, so now we can delete that entire box. Which one's that? Oh, that one at the bottom. Yeah, the bottom box here. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <coughs> <coughs> Article six, motion six B on page eleven. Ten thousand dollars for the staff vehicle. Tim, you brought up the issue of, uh, that you'd like to see that number be thirty thousand. Yes. This would be borrowing within the levy. We can borrow 30000 within the levy? Yep. The tank can go to 30000 Yep. Okay. So 
one comment I'd like to make on that is, well, one question first. As far as it being a town hall staff vehicle, it's the, it's really a building, an inspections department vehicle, right? I mean, the other townhouse staff doesn't really use it, do they? Sometimes they do, but most mostly it's Tim that uses it. Because mm -hmm. so. I, I think it may be beneficial to rename it as the inspections department vehicle. That way it's clear that it belongs to that department and that way we can show that it's going to a department that generates revenue from the town. And then obviously like any other vehicle, it's all town property. And if it needs to be borrowed by somebody else in town hall or DPW, then obviously it'll be borrowed. But I think that way it's made clear that that's Primary? an asset of the inspections department. Okay. So that's, that's just. I think it wasn't in, we tried to put it in a budget at one time. Yeah. Oh, it's been back. a couple of times we've tried to put yeah. it in yeah. Three times, I don't know. Yeah. 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 You know. Okay, so do we want it in there or not? We want to hash it. Do we yes. vote on that? Or sure. Can we make a motion that we increase the amount to 30000 and rename it? Mm -hmm. Inspections? Car vehicle. Or vehicle? Is that the name that works? Is that right? good? Or you, I mean, you. That would be very nice. <laughs> just, just Primary as, use? Just as long as I can use it to go to a meeting. Anybody can use one when they need it. <laughs> <laughs> all right. We'll all right. try, I mean, we'll that's try that's how we go in the. With yeah, all the cars. Yeah, we'll go to May I have, may I yeah. have a You guys second. go to MMA, go ahead. Okay, there you go. May second. I, second? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you very much. Uh, okay. been a long time coming, but I do appreciate it. That's good. Well, you got to wait till tomorrow. Wait till tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I will give you our schedule when we need it. <laughs> right. You'll get it about an hour a week. <laughs> Thank you. Next. Next one is on page 24, article 12. This is just a uh, editorial change where it says subsection 19.3. Uh, that's actually printed <coughs> in the zoning law. If bylaws improperly, it should be section 19.2.7. And then the next article, Article 13, 14, 15, relating to marijuana. Planning Board has informed me that their intention is to pass over those three articles yeah. that's not being ready for planning. There's a lot of questions. I don't know if you yeah. have been, you've got any calls, but I have. Oh, yeah. Okay, sounds okay. good. So they do intend to do number 16, which would be to extend the moratorium, the moratorium on adult use marijuana from November 30th to June 1st. Oh, that's right. We're going to pass over. What right? happens if that is struck? What if that doesn't pass? It's Wild West. So. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. And Perfect. In any place that sells a gummy bear. All right. <laughs> North Hadley Village Hall, commercial broker, RFP, mm -hmm. Jen. Yes. It's yours. Take it away. Tim can handle it if you want. Okay, we're going to give it out to him and take over. Um, as you all know, the, we went out to bid for a real estate broker. We had one response, and that was from Government Services at Keller Williams Commercial. Uh, I went through their proposal, and I ranked it. It was one, so <laughs> there was only one, so it was really easy. Um, the agent experience, they're, they are highly advantageous. Their sales history, um, they have sold historic projects, but they have not sold any historic projects with historic res uh, restrictions on them. So that's why they are not advantageous for that. And um, their proposed plan, I just want to peek. Why I did not give them a highly. The reason I did not give them a highly on that one is because of the milestones were not clear for all of them and when they would present to us. So I chose advantageous for that one. Um, after I ranked them, I opened the price proposal and you can see from the attached, they have chosen to charge fees for task, even though the proposal does say that they are paid upon completion of the sale. So task one through seven, they are charging 8,000 for one through three and an additional 4,000 for task four through seven. <clears throat> and 
and um, I called them today and asked for a little clarification. They did say they were willing to negotiate on that, but as how, how the proposal stands right now, they are asking to be paid as the tasks are completed before the sale of the building. Um, they're also charging an 8% fee for their breakage compensation, which I have willing to believe that it's typically about 6%. So that is the proposal from Keller Williams. And there are a few options out there for us. Uh, I don't know if y'all have any questions about it before. No, let's have the options. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, the, the first thing is, is there, there is no money in the budget at this time to pay for these tasks. Mm -hmm. So we would have to negotiate that, that all fees are paid upon completion of the sale. Or um, we can reject the bid and put another RFP out ourselves. Um, there wouldn't be the same restrictions on it as there was last time, that nobody's putting a fire substation out there, nobody's trying to retain the ball field. It would be historic preservation, or restrictions, but it would not have the same um, restrictions on it, the other restrictions we put on it going out if we chose to do it ourselves again. And the third one is, is we could keep North Hadley Village Hall and use CPA money and fix it up ourselves. That's why I did not look at you as I said it out loud. Yeah. <laughs> That's why I did this and looked at Christian. <laughs> I looked over here, I looked at the floor over here, oh. not right there. Um, so that that is where we stand. Um, like I said, they are willing to negotiate on those. But if the negotiations didn't work out... <laughs> James. One level. Oh, One no. level. <laughs> I forgot she was still there. <laughs> it, it would be about, uh, and, and the base proposal price would be 6000 minimum for the compensation if they sold it for us, minimum. So we're looking at about $19,000 for them to sell the building. So, you know, it's typical for real estate brokers residential, commercial, whatever, to work on a contingency basis, not for fees up front. So I... Yeah, I don't, I'm I particularly in favor of that myself. Yeah. Not only is, well, is the mean, pricing a little ridiculous, but the upfront fees are a little ridiculous as well. If we can negotiate it into the, the final sale, then... Yeah, I mean, you know, it if should be can, contingent upon sale of the building. If they don't sell the yeah. building, then... That is, the proposal does say that, yeah, that yeah. The, the payment is, the, the RPO now clearly states that it is your payment space on you selling the building. Right. That all payments are not made until then. It but, is in the proposal. And I mean, up in 8 and the 10% uh, brokers. Yeah, that's crazy. That's crazy. So the other option that I mentioned last time is uh, it, it will delay it a little bit, but open it up to not necessarily just commercial, but any any brokers that want to put in a bid, and I think you'll see, especially from more local brokers, that you'll see uh, more reasonable things. So is it, it would probably be to our benefit to put this out to our own RFP. You mean to to sell it ourselves as a town, or to get another broker? Broker, broker it out. Broker it out. I mean, I, I think I would do another RFP without <coughs> certain restrictions that we had on it before. And again, it makes a difference that there's not the ball field, you know, being used for something else. And right. There's no right away to the pond pit well, out there. Uh, are you so? We did an RFP mm -hmm. to find a commercial broker. Right. So I think what David's suggesting is we modify the RFP and open it up to. Any broker, but right. which would open it to residential mm -hmm. brokers as well. Mm -hmm. Not not do an RFP for Correct. the sale itself. Okay. Correct. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I think that's totally. I think reject right. what they've offered us right now, and then reopen yeah. it up to. Okay. So if we did that, how long would that take to turn around? Do you say? Two weeks. No, two months. Two months. Two more months. <laughs> I was thinking we could get the RFP together within two weeks, but then we would have to send it out, so that would be the two months. Well, but it's still cheaper letting it sit there than paying $19,000 yeah. that we don't Yeah, yeah. The fire that we don't still have. using it, so, yeah. you know, until, until the substation's built. Correct. Mm -hmm. Is there any so, major no. expenses coming up that you can think of there other than just running it kind of on a skeleton budget that we have now, the heat? 
You know, we just have to be prepared if, if the heat system uh, fails, we're going to have to do something else. I mean, everything's just, it's just keeps on going. But yeah, we, we've done what we could on the building to keep minimal uh, heat and anything else that was needed for the fire department. I think we could still do that. But just be prepared if we have to come to you, there's, there, there might, that, that might happen. Okay. Yeah. So, should we have a vote on that, please? Yeah, so, make a motion to reject the proposal and uh, issue a new RFP opening up to other regions. Second. Any other further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Oh, perfect. Thanks for coming, Tim. No problem at all. See, we, we, we will be done before 8, so I'm sorry. Yeah, that's fine. I, I totally understand. There's no big They're, they're saving my food. <laughs> Take care. All right, enjoy. Thank you. Okay, last on the agenda here is this a Turka Park update. We don't have anybody here from Park and Rec tonight. Did they not know we were discussing this? Yeah, so uh, what they've done is they've decided that they're going to uh, do what they need to do to button up uh, Zaturka Park for the winter, uh, come back in the spring and ask CPA for additional monies. Um, More? So we're yeah. not doing this change order? You are doing the change order. That's the work that's needed in order to button <coughs> things up. So they're taking out the paved, uh, paved parking lot putting in the stabilization fat, uh, fabric and remediating the stump and logs. Net of $2,127. Uh, that comes out of the woodchuck, which is co-administered with the select board. And, and the so the 22000 is going to come out of the woodchuck? No. The Two. Scroll down. Oh. Get all of it, huh? That's the net two thousand one hundred twenty-seven dollars. Oh. Okay. Well, hang on, hang on. <coughs> so, what we're doing is we're deleting the twenty-seven thousand dollars that was set aside for paving. Yep. But that still has to happen. Right. That's why and we're coming back at the in the spring to raise more money through the CPA. <coughs> yeah, right. Through the CPA because the woodchuck only had a total yeah. of twenty-five. Right. Basically, the price just went up twenty-seven thousand dollars. We're getting all the site work done right now. All the underground work done. So. No, I understand. I'm so just saying we're not we're not we're not saving anything here. We're deferring twenty-seven thousand yeah. dollars, which is probably going to be a much higher number. I just want to make make sure we're following all the money here. Which which right. can't be done until next year anyway. Right. Now, so. so your woodchuck fund, if if you approve this, the woodchuck fund for the Park and Rec Commission will still have fifteen thousand three hundred and change in it. So, so I spoke with Greg at Amasta, and he stated that. What did he mean by us sitting on our laurels, basically? What, so what didn't we do? Basically, he couldn't get an answer. They, their contractors and his, him and his subcontractors were sitting there for a month, basically doing nothing, because they, uh, uh, in his words, he didn't have any clear direction in order what needed to be done, whether they were going to button things up and just leave it, or whether they were going to finish it up. I guess he had Warner Brothers mobilized to do paving and everything else this year and get it done. And from what he said, it would have been a significant savings if we had gotten it done this year at the current pricing versus putting it off to next year. But basically, it's too late at this point. But because there was really no ownership or responsibility um, of. But I don't understand that. I thought Park and Rec's in Park, charge. Park and Rec commissioners are in charge of it. According to them, you couldn't yeah. get an answer from them about how to proceed. Well, then don't put it on us. Yeah. And I thought we approved a change order. We to did. We did. Yeah. And they're still they're still removing the stumps today. I seen the trucks pulling out. That's of what it was. And they're still doing all the Jeez. they're still doing all the site work there with the drainage mm -hmm. and the pond. They built a retention pond. And it's just been one thing after another with the site work over there. Mm -hmm. But I would say that you'll probably <coughs> see that go up another at least ten grand for the paving come sure. the spring. Sure. Well. I mean, I'm just worried, when we were worried about this when the project started, I mean, it's, this is the dangerous area we play in where there isn't 
direction. We thought there was clear authority, but it's not clear enough. Right. And and now you now you have one foot in and one foot out, right? So going back to town meeting, people are going to be asked to. I mean, it's almost like well, you're getting arm twisted parking, to approve the additional cost. Which is right. going to have to answer for it. No, well, I mean, they're again. We've been through the. Yeah. They're an elected body. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, they're going to have to explain it. And, but you know, the underground work is the site work is like we did with the pump stations. Yeah. Until you funny. until you get down underground, you don't know what you, you don't have. Know what's under it. Mm -hmm. You know. Well, the rumor for years is that it was a stump dump. Yeah. Well, it was. <coughs> We knew that playing baseball there as kids. <laughs> well, I mean, we had yeah, Tony Katara sinking in a hole yeah, out there back in the day, right? Yeah. 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 We had to be the short kid anyway, and all of a sudden he was missing out in the outfield. He was down in the hole. <laughs> true, true yeah. story. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so so you're right. I mean, it's really going to be up to Park and Rec to answer to it on town meeting floor if they come looking for money, but we're also authorizing that woodchuck money to get drained down, which is too bad. Yeah. So. So, motion to approve. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Just to announce that the position still remains vacant. Oh, Jane's yes. still here. Maybe she's interested. <laughs> <laughs> Want to be in my showcase free time? time. <laughs> yeah. Come on, senior center's wrapping up. We're almost <laughs> ready to break ground, right? <laughs> now I have to do fundraising. Have they made any advances over there? I've been getting a few emails from Linda. I haven't gotten any emails. No, just for the that selectmen's meeting. Yeah. yeah. What is the what can the initial stand for? Hampshire County. Hampshire Coles. Council of Governments. Oh no. Formerly known as HPAC. <laughs> All right, so we should probably try to find somebody though because oh, uh, it's an elected position, isn't it? Yeah, but we don't we have to you can appoint appoint until nobody is offered. No, 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 so we should should we try to find somebody to be at the table? We pulled right. we pulled out of there, so nobody wants to jump in there. Yeah. Well when are we out actually? Coming up this about eight months. Eight months. Eight months. Eight months. Eight yeah. months. But they, they meet on like Thursday nights. Like once a month or something? Once a month. Um, but then I'm sure they're having other meetings, just there, there's a lot a going lack on. A lot of something to do. <laughs> no, they, I mean, they're, they have many initiatives underway, so I'm sure that there's some other involvement other than just the monthly meeting. Where does one get elected to that position? Is it on a ballot? Yeah, yeah. Yes. Okay, I nominate. Uh, Mr. Uh, Stanley Christian. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think no. he likes that position. I mean, yeah, if we really need somebody, I could always try, but uh, well, maybe it's going to be could, tough to squeeze in one more meeting. Yeah. Maybe we can put on our thinking caps, maybe. and if there's anybody who's around town that might be interested yeah. in it, and try to... I mean, you've got most most of the contact, David, with them, mm -hmm. you know, for what they're really doing. Have you had any contact with them? Yes, I have actually. Okay. All right. They're they were trying to work on a regional HR uh, system, something very similar to the New England Employers Association that we're already a member of. Mm -hmm. So. But that was a while ago. Yeah, they're still work trying to get that off the ground. Oh, they st okay, they are. Yeah. Okay. <coughs> well, the other the big thing is the financial review. Um, I mean, maybe maybe we could request updated financial statements. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, it's been I a while since they sent it to us. All right, so Housing Choice Small Town Instructive Grant, would you like to get the good news? Yeah, so we applied for the grant to fix the uh, water infrastructure in the vicinity of Campus Plaza Road. We were awarded uh, fully $95,000 for that project. The next step, uh, and I have this here in case there was a next step beyond just the announcement, Next step will be a contract which we'll receive from the state and we'll get that uh, project going. Uh, the way it works is 25% up front in order to get the project going. This is obviously a pass-through. 
And then it's a reimbursable grant, very much like Chapter 90 at that point forward. And to be clear, that's non-town owned water that's system. That's non-town owned water. For the record. Absolutely. The, uh, are we contracting an outer? I'm not clear on that part. This is a pass-through. I haven't out? done one of those before, so <coughs> uh, the state is going to have to take me by the hand. And we've done the preliminary work of reviewing the uh, scope of work and getting the prevailing wages for this. Uh, so we'll so have to be probably going out to bid and contract it out. Yeah, so whatever, however the state wants us to handle it, we'll, we'll obviously follow their lead, but uh, it's uh, it's needed repair, and it's good that they fully funded us. Very good. That's great. Do you got anything big to announce in your report tonight? Uh, the couple of things. I'll just briefly run through it. The main thing is that we received a gift from the University of Massachusetts as part of our partnership agreement for $14,000 for a mobile radar sign mm -hmm. and if you could have vote tonight to accept that fourteen thousand dollars as a gift we can put it into a special account and start using it. So that'll, that'll be a, a second sign that will have? That'll have be the second one that we have. <coughs> second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you to the university. Yes absolutely and they, uh, they will start working with them for the defibrillators. So that's the next thing. Mm -hmm. um, any, any movement on Meeting with Sue Chancellor? Uh, no, in fact, I need to call Tony Morales on a number of things. Just going through these, we've touched upon lots of them. Dalt Town meeting all the time. Everybody come out to vote tomorrow night, 7 o'clock, Hopkins Academy. Is there an update on the DPW search committee? Um, we started our first round of interviews on <coughs> Monday night. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so we interviewed several candidates. We have uh, one more to finish up tomorrow night prior to town meeting. And uh, we're just going through the process, trying to find the most qualified candidate for the town. <coughs> How many applicants Excuse did you have? Four. Four. Mm -hmm. Any questions? Mm -hmm. Any questions? Mm -hmm. Any questions? Mm -hmm. So the other uh, update is we uh, applied for the Community Compact IT grant and we were awarded 19350 for the Integrated uh, Financial Billing Collection and Reconciling Program out of the collector's <coughs> Excuse me. Right. Is that a bless you? Mm -hmm. I don't know what it was. Okay. Thank you. <coughs> Who's that? <laughs> <laughs> so God bless me, the devil won't. <laughs> So uh, we had applied for that uh, uh, integrated uh, uh, software, but we also had applied for the police department dash and body cameras, which were not funded through this grant. So we're trying to explore other alternatives for raising money for that, that project. And how are the other grants that we applied for? So far pretty good. So we got the 14,000 from UMass, we got the 95,000 from, uh, from the uh, Housing Choice Infrastructure and Small Town Grants, and then we got the 19350 from the IT grant. The other grants that are coming up, which we haven't submitted yet, are going to be the uh, Efficiency and Regionalization Grant, and we're talking about document management for town halls for that. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a training grant for OSHA coming up, and then there's the Maya Safety uh, Grant for uh, air pack testing units and possibly small, um, or what do they call for trenches you put in the box, trench boxes. Oh, okay. We have a big one, but we don't have any small ones. <coughs> yeah, we got two now. Yeah, there's a small one and a big one. All right, we're going to try to get another small one. Sorry, what's a trench box? It's a metal uh, <coughs> trench from falling in on you when you're down underground. Oh, that's called a box. Wow, well, I don't know what it's called, but. Yeah, it's called yeah. 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 On the dash and body cams, that was originally in capital. Um, and then we talked about getting a grant for it. Do, right. I mean, how big of a hurry are they in to get those? Do we have time to wait, or do we want to put those back into capital? Or Probably put this we back. Don't. 
Let's put it back and yeah. wait for the spring. Okay. Yeah, I, th I think so. For I think we might so get something between <clears throat> now and then. Yeah. We had submitted uh, for capital fifteen thousand dollars for this project. For the grant, we went on to ninety-five thousand for the whole system. Mm. So the chief and I are talking about. So what's the right size for the town of Hadley? If we have to put that on our own bill. Mm -hmm. But the new cruiser will have a dash camera, if I'm mm -hmm. not mistaken. I can't remember that detail. I think it will. I think it does. Yeah. Yeah. Makes sense to me. Why wouldn't they load it? I think yeah. it's standard on the new yeah. ones now. All right. The, uh, uh, what about the sewer and water for Room 9? I haven't heard anything. No, the 700000 for the Mass Works Grant Heaven or the parking in the center village. Or Roosevelt Street. So, I mean, I'd like to see the state actually talk to Mass Dot about incorporating it all in together. It would really be nice mm -hmm. at some point. After town meeting, I think we uh, we need to get in touch with Mass DOT because yeah. I have heard nothing on projects on Bay Road Bridge or from the uh, Route 9 widening and we need to know whether we're supposed to be gearing up for that or not or if are they yeah, delaying I mean, the projects. They should have been in here a couple times already in the last six, eight months. There's no reason for them not to come and address us for the work that's going to be done in this town. You know? And they've got a new director over there. So. Well, let's invite them. <coughs> All right, what else? All right, so special town meeting tomorrow night, 7 o'clock, Hopkins Academy. Uh, parents weekend at UMass, October 20th, and uh, Kestrel Trust 5K race for farmland, October 21st. Early voting, October 22nd to November set, uh, 22nd to November 2nd, with a Saturday, October 27th, Jessica will be here in case people want to do early voting on that Saturday. Absentee ballots are due November 5th at noon, and then we have state and federal elections November 6th. Thank you. Any, <coughs> any announcements this evening? Yes. Uh, Parks and Rec has asked uh, Brianna and me to announce that, that they have a Tag sale, the Friends of Park and Rec are hosting a tag sale at North Hadley Village Hall on Sunday for surplus items. I think there's a miniature pool table and some basketballs and things like that that they're going to have. And I believe they also have some furniture items that they're going to uh, do a tag sale for. And then the proceeds will go to fund uh, scholarships for people who, who need them. And then they have it posted on their Facebook page with more information. have condolences from the Hadley Select Board to the family of John Powsland, to the family of Robert Malinowski, who did graduate from Hopkins Academy, um, and he has many brothers and sisters that still live here in town. Uh, Jane Gerlinski, who was Ed's uh, mom, um, she lived up on Mount Warner. Uh, Joan Zomek, she came from Amherst, but she, her family is a uh, part of our Holy Rosary, Holy Redeemer. They get that um, so they are very much part of our community. And we also had the passing of Joe Wilga. Uh, so condolences to all of their families from the select board. And I'll take a motion to adjourn and meet tomorrow night. Yes. <laughs> sure, I'll you want to stay? <laughs> sure, I'll make a motion to adjourn. Second. Okay. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Abstain. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll see. We'll be here at 6 tomorrow. 6 tomorrow. Uh, uh, Brian West said he might be a few minutes late, 6 15, 6 20. Uh, he and I sat down. We went through the warning, so he knows the changes. Okay. Everybody show up in an exercise of the right to vote. Thank you.
Sounds like a plan. Let's get a quorum. We need a hundred. That's the other. Start making phone calls. <laughs> 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 <laughs>